Hello makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. It's good to have you here. Now, last week we worked on a project where we gridded out a piece of paper. Basically we put some lines down, but we made sure we had kind of a formatted grid that we could work with. And that's going to come in real handy for this week's project. Because what I want to be able to do with the grid, and you can see it right here in front of me, is I want to be able to start to demarcate it a little bit more tightly so that I can start to put individual art elements in the square. So we had created one inch by one inch squares with a half inch seam in between. Now the reason I did this primarily in planning ahead is I want to be able to use my scotch tape as in essence a masking tool for this project. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I have a center line here which is a half an inch across and uh, coincidentally uh, if I come in here and use the scotch tape, I can use it to lay down a dividing line that falls right within that half inch parameter. That's what I'm trying to do. And let's trim that off. All right. So now we have some scotch tape. Now I know it's 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 magic tape. It, it, it disappears when you put it down so it's really hard to see on camera, but trust me, it is there. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other areas here. I'll make it a little bit long so I kind of anchor this piece of paper down too. And let's just come in here and just take a, you know, patience is good here. And we'll just lay a second line there. We'll do the same thing for this line over here. Looks like we got that at the top. Let's do the same thing at the bottom. And, and if it's not absolutely 100% perfect, you know what? No one's ever really going to notice. And there we go. All right. So I am uh, working. I have five vertical lines. Let's do the same thing the other way. You can see I also have these lines, five more of them. So same process. Come in here. And again, trim that off and plunker on down right there. Beautiful. What'd you do today? I watched some guy on YouTube put tape on paper. This is very exciting. All right, and there's my final line right there. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, I'm going to flip it back so that uh, my, my thick part is on the bottom, because that's how I'm going to work this here. But I, I have some tape here to hold my piece of artwork down, which is going to come in handy. Now again, you can't see my grid, because it's, uh, it's magic tape, but uh, trust me, it is there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of a bundle of, uh, of fine liner color pens. And uh, I'm going to pick a, a handful of them here. Let's see what kind of colors we want. Uh, I'm going to go with a brown. I kind of have a back earth tony thing. I have a blue color here, maybe a little bit of purple. I have a darker blue. I have a teal. I might kind of stay within that uh, color range. Um, I'm going to have a little bit of a kind of a, a yellowish hue show up from time to time. And I think I need some red, some sort. So there's a red color that will pop nicely and maybe purple. Again, my, my criteria for this is and just thinking about what I want to, to emerge here. Uh, because what we're going to use this tape for is masking. We're going to make sure that when we are drawing on in, in our grids that we don't go outside the grids. We want to stay with inside the lines and you know that's not always an easy thing to do. So if we take a color, I've got this purple here for example, and I come in here and I just start putting lines in one of my squares, you'll notice I'm kind of going outside the square as well because uh, it's not precision for me, right? I'm coming in here and I'm putting some, some different colors in here. But what's going to happen when I remove the tape? It's going to remove any of the excess ink that it might be a problem for me. So I'm going to come in here and uh, we'll, do a, we'll do a few of these. I'll get a layer of purple down here. I'm going to kind of just scribble in them like this. Maybe cross hatch, go the other way. And uh, we'll play around with that. I'll do a couple of these and then I'll spare you having to watch me fill them all in. But uh, let's come in here. And again, we've got a kind of a green color here. And uh, I'll put some green over here as well. But because there's no way I could be super precise in making sure I stay scribbling within each one of these squares, this just gives me an opportunity to, uh, to not have to worry about that. The masking will take care of that for me. Let's get some yellow in here again. I'm going to have some accent colors. And uh, you know what? A little bit of red. That red will really pop in here. Yeah, it's going to really pop. Now again, my objective on this piece is to really go through here and kind of create a combination of different colors and uh, maybe maybe a little grid, uh, different grids. I don't know. We'll kind of see as 
as we go along what's going to work. But I want to fill them in with a lot of colors to create kind of, a, kind of an interesting overall texture and color pattern. Now, by the way, if you don't have these, uh, these pens, uh, gel pens work really well. Ballpoint pen, right? If you have a few different colored ballpoint pens, that will work perfectly here. You can also play around with pencils and other cross hatching and shading types of things. It really is up to you. So I'm going to spend a little, little bit of time here kind of working my way through these different squares. And then we'll talk about what happens next. <laughs> Well, we're getting close, and uh, the good news is that we've had an opportunity to really explore uh, a lot of the colors. And in truth, some of the pens have been uh, non-cooperative, kind of dried out a little bit, and uh, not giving me the colors I want. And what I'm really looking at here is a combination of at least three or more colors in each square, but I also want to put some complementary colors in here, things that really help each other out. So purples and yellows and blues and, and, and reds and greens being mixed together as best we can. I've also put in, as you can see, uh, some, some straight lines as well as some uh, just some scribbly lines, some circular scribbles, as it were. And uh, I'm really just trying to create a combination of some pretty interesting things. Now, like any project, you're going to get to a point, I think I'll put a little red in there, I've got a little red here. Um, you get to a point in any project where you're like, you have to pull the plug. You have to say, I think, I think we're done putting colors on here. We're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to call it, call it quits because I also don't want to overwork any piece. And uh, you may be familiar with that. You know, it's like knowing when to stop painting, knowing when to stop drawing. At some point you have to say, I am close enough to where I wanted to be, and I think this is going to work for what I need to do. And I guess if I wanted to come in here later and say, gosh, that didn't, color-wise, that didn't work out really well, maybe I can add a little bit more color, we might have that opportunity as well. And uh, the next is my favorite part. It's the, really the unveiling, and what it's going to allow us to do is to come in here and to start pulling this tape off. Now, I will caution you, as, as I have in the past, uh, well, Scotch Tape does a pretty good job uh, does a tremendous job of masking things when we're working on paper. And this is a, a multimedia paper as opposed to a heavy duty watercolor paper. So it's a little bit of a, uh, a finer grain, if you will. It's not as textured as the watercolor paper is. But you still need to be really cool when you're peeling this stuff off because uh, there are times when it will decide to take a little bit of the paper with it. And you don't want that to happen. So right here, it's just about slow and steady. Yeah, there we go. And uh, let's do the same thing. We'll take these guys off first since they went on last and come the other way. Now, I'm going to point that out to you. I've got a little piece of paper that has come up here. Am I happy about that? No, I'm not. But I own glue. And so when you run into a situation like that, a little bit of a glue stick, just hit that, push that back down, spread it out. And give it a moment and that problem will be magically magically disappeared now I will share one other tip with you just as an aside and uh, when you're working with you know any kind of adhesive tape the adhesive is going to behave differently depending upon what temperature it is so what do I mean by that well in my studio uh, uh, most often I, I don't certainly don't use this on my hair but I have a hair dryer and what this can really help me to do is for drying paint and moving things along, but it also is really helpful if I want to heat up tape before I'm removing it to make the adhesive a little softer. Let's give this a try. Wow. 
And sometimes that's really what's necessary. Again, if I can heat that up just a little bit while I'm taking it off, it's going to make it a lot easier for me to, uh, to just not ruin my piece of artwork that I worked so hard on creating, right? Because that's the, that's the sad thing, is with that last little bit, and you're just trying to get it done, and uh, something goes terribly wrong, and that makes you, uh, makes you sad. I think it takes longer to take the tape off than it did to put it on. All right, so here we are, and uh, now we're starting to see, of course, the emergence of our art, which is really the goal here. But one last thing that needs to happen is we have a lot of these different lines. Uh, we, we probably want to get rid of all of these lines. Now, one of the things also to keep in mind is we don't want to erase where we have just put our glue, because that's not going to end well. There are different approaches. I've done a video in the past of all these different eraser tools. I'm going to show you one of the ones that I think will work really well here. And that is... This guy. Now, when I first bought this, my first thought was, are you being foolish? Who the heck needs an electric eraser? Turns out, I do. It really comes in handy. And especially when we're dealing with lots of little lines like this and some precision, I just put my finger on the button here, and I can just use it almost like I'm using a pencil, and I can go in and undraw the line, as it were. So as I come in along the edge here, right, once again, just pick up the line as I go by. I can be much more precise, and it just really gives me, uh, first of all, it's easy, and second of all, oops, make sure don't pick up our glued piece, but also it just, it just is precise, it's easy, and not that, not that erasing is so darn hard, let's, let's get, get that straight, it's not exactly like, oh, my arms are so tired from erasing. And again, patience is the watchword. I know when you have a camera on you and you're trying to not waste people's time, you go a little faster than you probably normally would. Now that's one thing we can do. The other thing, of course, is just using a, a, uh, a plastic eraser, like this one from Prismacolor, one of my favorite erasers. And uh, with something like this, not hard to come in here and just hit those big lines all at once. And of course the ink from our pens is going to stick around. That's not going to go anywhere. It's just the eraser marks that are going to go away as we go over it. So we can go and do this pretty quickly. And there we are. Now, uh, I like how this piece turned out. It's again, it's a light kind of whimsical piece. The objective overall was to really talk about how we could build a grid and use the grid and mask the grid. Anyhow, that's what I wanted to share with you today. Thanks so much for dropping by. And by the way, if you want to see more of the artwork that we've created on this channel and the stuff that I do on my own, please visit me at spectivastudios.com. Yeah, it's, a, it's my online gallery, and there's lots of great stuff in there you might find interesting, I hope. And, uh, and you know, uh, make, make some, uh, let's make some lovely holiday gifts. Uh, the other side of this, of course, is that we do drop a video every single week. We love to be able to share tips and tricks and ideas on art creation, especially abstract art, and we'd love to have you join our little community. So feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. Anyway, this is Spider. Have yourself a fantastic week. I'll see you next time.